Hi, welcome to the first video in the technical Tecton series. In this video, we're going to use the Tecton Pipelines project and talk a bit about tasks. Tasks are one of the fundamental units in Tecton Pipelines. You use them for any kind of behavior that you want to implement as part of a pipeline. So if you want to clone a repository, upload some files, or run some tests, you'll do that in a task. One of the nice things about tasks is that they are really reusable. So you could have a task that clones a repository and reuse that across many different pipelines. Tasks can be written in such a way that they accept parameters and those parameters can configure or change the way that that task works. We'll talk about this a bit more as we work through the video. Just to get us started, let's, let's write a task from scratch and see how that looks. Okay, I've opened up my editor here and started a new file, task.yaml. The first thing that we do is we set the kind of the document that we're writing, and that's kinds task, and we give it an API version. This is a Kubernetes-ism. Uh, the task is known as a CRD or a custom resource definition, and the API version is the version of that CRD. Okay, so I'm going to create a description for this task. And all it's going to do is clone a repository and then print the title of, from the readme file. And for the name of this task, we'll call it, I don't know, git clone and print title. Nice and inventive. Okay, so now let's move on to the behavior of the task. The spec is the task specification. Um, we include steps in the spec and each step inside of a task spec is a kubernetes container so this first step we'll call it maybe the clone step so we'll give it a name first of all and for the image we'll use uh, an alpine image that has git in it and now i'm going to write what's called a script block now this is a field that is not present in kubernetes containers tecton steps take the Kubernetes container spec and they extend it a little bit. And the script field is one of those things that Tecton adds to it. So here I'm cloning a Git repository. Notice that I've, I've given it a specific repo URL. So I mentioned earlier that you can add parameters to tasks, but I'm not doing that here yet. We're just going to clone the Tecton pipelines repo. And then we're going to search the readme file for the first markdown title which I happen to know is always the title of the project. Okay, I'm going to save this and quit. And I'm going to apply this to my cluster. And all this does is it sends the YAML file to Kubernetes and stores it. Nothing's gonna happen yet. We submit the task, but we don't actually execute the task. We do that with a different document called a task run. Now that we've saved it, we can look at it as well. We can get it back. Let's have a look at the YAML. There are a bunch of extra fields that Kubernetes adds, um, but here is the step and the spec that we defined um, and a bunch of extra data, like the time that this task was created, the time that Kubernetes received it. Okay, now we need to run the task somehow. And for that, we use a different kind of document called a task run. Again, I'm creating a new file, this time called taskrun.yaml. It has a kind, which is taskrun, and it shares the API version with the task that we wrote before. For the metadata, I'm going to give the taskrun a name. Um, I'll just take the name of the task and add run to the beginning of it. And just like the task, we need to give it a spec. Um, the taskrun spec is much shorter, at least this one is. Uh, we just need to provide a reference to the task that we wrote earlier. And so we add a task ref field. And for the name of that, we just give it the name of the task that we used earlier. I've actually forgotten what that is. So I'm going to look it up from the task YAML, git clone and print title. Okay, and I'll put that in here. All right, I'll uh, save and quit. And now we need to apply this task run to the cluster. What happens when we submit the task run is that it executes the task that we referenced. Uh, so what we should see is that it's in a running state when we get it. And soon after that, we should see that it succeeds. Um, here I'm watching task runs and there we go, it succeeded. Okay, great. Um, so I think what we should do next, let's have a look at the task run 
in that's stored in Kubernetes. Uh, and what we'll see is that the first step uh, that we called clone has terminated and then it returned an exit code. Um, we can see the start time of the task run. And interestingly here, we have a pod name and that's how task runs are implemented. When you submit a task run, the Tekton Pipelines controller creates a pod for that task run. And each of the steps, which if you remember, they're, they're just containers, each of those steps are containers inside of that pod. Okay, so we've got the name of the pod. Let's uh, have a look at the logs and see what our clone step printed when it executed. Okay, great. So here we can see that in the logs of our step, uh, it cloned the pipelines repo, and then it searched for that first title in the markdown, and it found it, Tekton Pipelines. Now let's take a quick look at that pod. And we won't dive too deep into this because there's quite a lot that goes on, but let's have a look at the YAML and, and see what we can find out. I'm piping it here to less so that we can scroll up and down the the data. There are a lot of extra fields that Kubernetes adds to our original YAML. I'm just going to scroll through that. So the first thing to see here is this owner reference. And this tells you where this pod came from or who owns this pod. And we can see that it is our task run that owns this pod. Uh, next up, we can see the containers that were created from our steps. There is a script that's created and is then executed uh, inside of the container. And if we scroll down a bit, we should find uh, an init container that runs before our steps container that actually creates that script. So there's the name of the script file that's executed as part of our step. And just below that, we can see the actual content of the script block that we wrote earlier. Right, I'm just going to quit out of this now. We talked a bit about the pod that gets created when a task run runs. Let's go back to our task. We talked earlier a bit about how tasks could be reusable. And we also talked a bit about how you could provide parameters to tasks in order to change the things that they do. So let's extend this task a little bit. Right now, it clones a fixed repository name, the pipelines repository but maybe we should modify it so it can clone any repository. So in order to do that, let's open our task back up. Looking at the task, we can see that we have our uh, repo name here on line 11. So we want to replace that with something. We want to replace that with uh, the URL of any repo. So notice below how uh, we cloned the repo, the pipelines repo, and we got a directory called pipeline. Um, we then cd'd into that pipeline directory. Well, if we're cloning any repo, we want to make sure that the directory we clone into is the same, no matter what the name of that repo is, because we then want to cd into it. So the first change we should make is to give that directory a consistent name. So here, let's just clone into a directory called source. Now we want to update this repo to be whatever repo the user wants to clone. So for that, we're gonna add a param and we're gonna name that param repo URL and we'll give it a type of string. And finally, we'll set a default value and we'll make the default value the same as the fixed value we had before. Okay, now that we have a param defined, we can include that as part of our script. And the way that we do this is using a variable. And to refer to a param, we use dollar open brackets, params dot repo URL, and that's it. We close it with a bracket. Now this will clone whatever repository is passed in through the repo URL param. Okay, I'm gonna save that and quit. And I'll apply that to the cluster so that the updated task is saved in Kubernetes. Okay, now our task has a param and it's ready to be used. Let's apply our task run again and see what happens. 
Okay, this is interesting. It says that our task run has been configured, but we wanted one to be created. So what's happened here is that the task run has the same name as the one we used earlier, run git clone and read title. And because we used that name already, we can't invoke that same task run name again. A task run with a specific name is only good for a single execution of that task. So the way that we work around this is that we change the name into a generate name field. And what this does is it asks Kubernetes to append uh, a random string to the name of the task run each time we submit it. Now we have to submit it using a slightly different command, but the upshot is that each time the task run is used, it will create a brand new instance. And now we call kubectl create instead of kubectl apply. We pass the task run in again. This time we get a new name for our task run. It's run git clone and read title plus a random string. Okay, so now let's take a look at the logs from the pod of this task run. If you use the tab key, when you type kubectl logs, it will complete the first pods that it finds. So here we can see that it successfully cloned the pipeline repo. Now let's update our task run to change the repo that we're cloning. So here we edit the task run, we add a param with the same name as that we used in the task, repo URL, and we use a different value. And here I'm going to clone the triggers repo instead. So the same thing should happen. We should clone a repo and we should look in the readme file for that title, um, but it's gonna happen with a different repository instead. So let's see what happens. Okay, we've created a new instance of our task run. Okay, uh, clear that and let's have a look at the YAML for our task run. We're looking for the pod name so that we can inspect the pod. Okay, and now we look at the logs of that pod. And good, we can see that it clones the triggers repo instead of the pipelines repo. That's great. And again, it succeeded in getting the title from that repo's readme. Okay, we've talked a lot about parameters. Uh, now I'd like to move on and talk a little bit about task results. Task results give the user a way to write a task that returns some small snippets of data. Examples of this kind of data could be a git commit SHA or a branch name. So to illustrate this, we're going to update the task we wrote earlier to return the git commit SHA that is at the head of the repository that we're cloning. And we'll do this by adding a result to our task and then updating the script to capture the contents for that result and then writing that to a file. So we can get the commit a couple of different ways. Um, all we're gonna do here is use the git rev pass command and then send that to a results file. And here we reference the path to the file using a variable that Tekton exposes, results.commit.path. So what will happen when we run this task now? First, we'll clone the repository into the source directory. We'll CD into that directory and print the title just as before. And then after that's done, we will get the commit SHA using the rev pass command, write it to a file that Tekton is expecting, and ultimately the contents of that file will work their way back to the Tekton controller and into the YAML of the task run. Okay, I'll save and quit and apply this task. And then let's run it one more time. Okay, let's take a look at the result. We're going to get the YAML for that task run from Kubernetes, pipe it to less, scroll all the way down to the status.taskresults section. And here we can see the commit result, which has a value of the commit shell that we cloned just now. Okay, that's the end of this short introduction to tasks. Um, let's quickly recap what we've covered so far. First, we wrote a task and an associated task run. The task cloned a repository and then printed some information from the readme file of that repository. We then updated the task to accept 
a parameter that lets the user configure which repository to clone. And we updated the task run to use the generate name field so that every time we used the task run, it would get a brand new name. We then updated the task again to return a result. And finally, we ran the task one more time to see how that result field gets populated. In the next video, we're going to look a bit more in depth into how tasks are actually implemented. We'll talk about the reconcile loop where a task run becomes a pod. And we'll talk a bit about the entry point, which is how multiple steps all running inside of a pod are scheduled to happen one after the other. Thanks for watching.